Hi, my name is Dr. Julie Schweitzer. I'm here today to tell you about a project that we call Virtual Reality Attention Management, or VRAM. This project is devoted to trying to improve attention in children with ADHD. I have no financial conflicts with this project. So let me tell you a little bit about ADHD. It's a pervasive neurodevelopmental disorder. Most people with ADHD have problems with attention. They may be highly distractible. They may also have problems with hyperactivity and impulsivity or a combination of all of those symptoms. About five to 10% of children have ADHD and many continue to have these same symptoms as adults. We don't know what causes ADHD, but we suspect genetic and environmental risk factors are both at play. ADHD can also increase your risk for other psychiatric disorders such as problems with anxiety and mood disorders. It can also cause problems in school and particularly in the classroom setting. And it can also relate to issues uh, getting homework done. And for adults, they may have problems on the job as well. ADHD also puts one at risk for higher accident rates, whether that's car accidents or accidents at home also. They may also be at greater risk for use of, and abuse of alcohol and drugs of abuse. They can also have peer problems, whether it's with children, parents, teachers, or coworkers for adults. The typical treatment for ADHD involves medication, such as stimulant medication and or behavior therapy, like parent training or interventions in a school setting. And even though we have some treatments that work fairly well, we know that we need new treatments for ADHD because many issues such as distractibility are simply undertreated for our children. Distractibility is one of the most common problems in ADHD and that's why we've developed this project. And it's an issue that is across the lifespan so children, adolescents and adults can suffer from it. One of the greatest issues is, is that it impairs one's academic functioning as well as occupational and social functioning. In the classroom, it can interfere with one's ability to learn and get their work done. So typically in a classroom, a child with ADHD may be distracted by friends talking, the teacher talking, noises outside the classroom or noises in the classroom that interfere with their ability to listen to what is being said by a teacher, as well as to get their work done. For those children who are trying to do their Zoom work while learning from home, they can be very distracted also by perhaps their parents trying to get their work done, their dog, uh, their siblings, other noises going on in the background. We also know that distractibility is a public health issue. It turns out that people with ADHD have much higher accidents rates. That's even at home, such as tripping on things um, and then other serious uh, issues that, where they wind up in the emergency room. But also for those who are adolescents and adults, they tend to have more driving accidents. And we think that distractibility may be some of the core reasons why those driving accidents are higher. There are no known targeted treatments that are specifically tried to address distractibility, except we're trying to develop that right now. So why is there this need? Well, we know that medication can work well for some people, but it only improves symptoms while the medication is in the system. And most medication for ADHD only lasts to a few hours or maybe several hours a day. And once that medication is gone, the attentional issues are still there. Some children though can't even take medication because they suffer from severe side effects, such as problems with appetite where they lose too much weight or they get stomach aches, headaches, or they have trouble sleeping on medication for ADHD. Now for those people where medication does work, it might still be that our treatment that we're trying to develop can be a supplement to that medication as well. One thing we do also know is that behavioral treatments that are designed for ADHD typically do not target or improve distractibility. So what we're trying to use is new technology called virtual reality technology. So why are we trying to use VR technology? One is that it's really accessible. It's becoming increasingly accessible online, in stores. You can even get cardboard versions of virtual reality headsets. It's relatively inexpensive when you compare it to the other kinds of treatments that are available for ADHD. Another reason that we're doing it is that kids tend to like things like 
gaming and VR headsets. They think it's kind of cool, and that's pretty rare, that our children with ADHD would actually like a treatment that we're trying to develop for them. So it's less stigmatizing if you're doing something like actually being involved in a virtual reality treatment. As scientists, we like that there's lots of metrics or measures that we can get from the VR headset. So we can look at eye movements, we can look at head movements, and we can look at other measures to see whether or not the treatment is actually having a beneficial effect. Another major reason that we're using virtual reality is that it turns out that we're finding in other disorders, the virtual reality treatment can generalize to other settings. So what that means is that when somebody is doing the treatment using the VR headset, it can transfer to a real setting. So even though they're playing games, it turns out this might help them in the real classroom or perhaps doing their homework and so forth. And that's really one of the main reasons that we're really doing this study is that we're trying to see if we can develop a treatment that can cut across other settings and help people with ADHD transfer their new skills to different situations. Let me show you here what our VR classroom looks like. This is our VR classroom where we have children, avatar children sitting in the classroom. Uh, when your child is wearing a VR headset, they look down at a notebook, just like at, they're at their desk. There's a teacher sitting and standing in front of the classroom in front of a whiteboard. And there's a busy street where there may be where cars and buses go by and so forth. And there's a number of tasks that children who are practicing the VR uh, treatment do in the classroom. They're doing some attention tasks where there's animals that are shown. They're doing some math tests. They might be watching a video and so forth. But there's all these distractors that occur as well. So as I said earlier, there could be a, a, a bus or a car driving by the window. There could be a person walking by the window. We also have children talking to one another, the VR avatars talking to one another. They may drop a pen or a pencil. The teacher's cell phone may go off in the classroom. Uh, they may cough or sneeze and so forth, just like some of the real distractors a child would experience in a classroom. And what children in the study do is they practice this at home um, so they can get used to those distractors and to see if that can eventually improve their attention. So let me tell you about how children can participate if you're interested in our project. Our project is for children between 8 to 12 years of age. They have to have significant problems with attention or distractibility. They may or may not have an actual diagnosis of ADHD. If they don't have a diagnosis of ADHD, we can see if they meet our criteria by the diagnostic evaluation that we'll do. Children take a headset that we give them and they practice three to five sessions at home a week for about 20 minutes a session for about 10 sessions total. So mostly it'll take about two to three weeks for the practice. They'll also have to visit the Mind Institute for two to three visits where we are practicing very careful uh, uh, social distancing and so forth. Um, and we make sure that um, the equipment is clean and that you and your child will be quite a distance from us. Um, so to reduce the likelihood of contracting COVID. We also do some of our procedures over the phone or a Zoom interview. When our children are done doing their work each day, their training, they then get to play fun uh, VR games as well. And children and parents who are involved will receive compensation for their time. Now, unfortunately, children who are currently taking medication for ADHD cannot be included in our study. And if your child has um, psychiatric conditions such as depression, severe depression or autism, uh, they also are not eligible for our study at this time. If you'd like to find out more about our study, please contact us over email or the phone and our Email contact information is hs-airlab at ucdavis.edu. Our phone number is 916-347-4061. And if you're interested in our study, please let us know specifically that it's the VRAM study that you're trying to contact us about because we do have a number of studies right now. I would like to show you some of the people you might interact with. These are some of our members of our team, our lab right now. So you may be hearing from them or you may be emailing them. And this is just one of our collaborators who is a wonderful attention and vision scientist, Dr. Joy Gang, who I also wanted um, to give a shout out to. Thank you very much for your time and attention, and we hope to be hearing from you soon.